Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you guys have seen ASMR videos in the past speaking different languages. Maybe in the video they say hello in multiple languages. Maybe they say another word in multiple languages. And those videos are excellent. And I thought, hey, knowing me, you guys know me, if I'm going to do something similar, then I got to add my own spin to it. I've actually got a very special treat for you guys today because I think this video is actually going to be quite fun to make and quite enjoyable to watch. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to the right of me right here on my screen, on my big screen, and I'm going to explore 45 common words that English took from other languages. And I've read some of these. these some of these are going to be pretty interesting. In some ways, English, French and German are almost like three siblings who grew up together. Each language influenced the other two in some way, but one of the biggest influences on English was French. In fact, from the 9th century until the 14th century, a form of French was even the official language in the courts of England. That's crazy. During those years, the common non-royal people spoke an older version of English, while the kings and queens and members of the court spoke French. And to make it more confusing, most documents were written in Latin. As you can imagine, there was a lot of mixing between the languages. So let's look at some interesting English words that still look French. The first English word that basically derived from French is actually art. The word art originated from the Latin ars, which originally meant skill or craft. It came to English through Old French. Example, she enjoys abstract art. The word number two, beef. Beef came to English from the Old French word both, boy. B-O-E-F, so beef, but replace one of the E's with an O, but it's not the only meat name with a French origin. Mutton, veil, and pork are all thought to be derived from Old French. Example, cut the beef into slices and serve it with sauce. My own added example, yo, if these guys over here keep staring at me, there's gonna be some beef. <laughs> Word number three is ballet. This is a form of dance that developed in France. Keep in mind that you don't pronounce the D at the end. Instead, the second syllable should sound like lay. Why are you telling me how to pronounce it, Mike? Example, my niece and nephew are in ballet classes. So I watched their five hour ballet performance on Saturday. It was pretty long. Word number four is cafe. It is written both with accent marks and without in English. Café comes from the French word for coffee. It is also very similar to the word for coffee in many other languages. Example, I've gotten about 20 minutes for lunch, so I'll just stop at the café for a quick sandwich. Word number five is country. Originally from Latin, the English word country likely comes most directly from Old French, from the Old French word country, spelled C-U-N-T-R-E-E, -E, country, country, example, I prefer to live in a hot country. <laughs> Number six, croissant. A croissant is a type of pastry or bread that is light and flaky. A similar type of bread in the English language is a crescent roll, is it? I don't think anything can beat croissants. The French have baguettes and croissants and they are just undefeated. Example, Tina really loves to make croissants because they taste better than other types of bread. Tina, you know the vibe, Tina. Tina, I mess with you. Number seven, the seventh word is dance. Interesting. The word dance likely comes from old French verb danser, which means to dance. Example, he danced her across the floor. Word number eight is dragon. An awful lot of animal names, mythical and otherwise, can be traced back to French. But let's face the facts. Dragon is the most fun. True, dragons are not real. 
Israel. Other animals who owe their names to the French include griffins, phoenixes, dolphins, squirrels, and more. Are griffins real? Are phoenixes real? Why do the French have a lot of names of animals that are mythical? You can guess which ones of those are real. Okay, funny. Example, a dragon guarded the treasure. The next word is entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a person who starts their own company. Other common forms of the word include entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial. Example, Elon Musk, the man who started SpaceX and Tesla Motors, is one of the most famous entrepreneurs in the world. The next word is faux pas. Kind of sounds like faux pas. And I like, anyway. <laughs> this phrase describes being a social mistake. Well, really, or making a social mistake. Faux pas. If you make a faux pas, then the mistake usually isn't very big and doesn't hurt anyone physically, but can make people very uncomfortable, really. Example, I committed a pretty big faux pas last night. I kept trying to offer Maria beers, but completely forgot that she stopped drinking alcohol three years ago. I see, I see, I see, I see what a faux pas is. I've never heard faux pas used in life in general so i think i'm going to start using faux pas in my in my day-to-day -day life the next word is actually fruit the word fruit passed through old french as fruit juice fruges before making its way to english example we have a bowl of fruit on the table the next word is genre in french this means kind or style in english is used to describe a category of something especially when talking about entertainment you'll especially hear people using the words talk about books movies and music example roy likes many types of music but his favorite genre is heavy metal roscoe's favorite genre is hip-hop the next word is hors d'oeuvres i've definitely heard of hors d'oeuvres these are small bits of food that are served at special occasions usually parties they are quite similar to appetizers, but appetizers are usually served before a larger meal. Example, we were invited to Tina and Roy's engagement party. We expected a big meal, but there were only hors d'oeuvres. That was okay though, since we weren't really that hungry. The next word is lingerie. Lingeries. This is used to describe women's underwear or sleepwear that is usually sexy or special in some way. Did you guys know that the, 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 the original creator of Victoria's Secret, he actually created it for his wife, right? And then, like, he sold the company for some really cheap price. And then the next year, he actually um, deleted himself because the company was worth, like like a billion dollars i don't know how much it was but like he sold it for like really cheap and then it became like it blew up the next year so he kind of kind of got pissed anyway the next word is rendezvous in english this word is used to describe either a place where people plan to meet or an action of meeting a people at a specific time really example we're in a new city and i'm sure all of you want to explore it a bit it's 2 p.m now so let's rendezvous back here at 6, then we'll go to dinner. Rendezvous. Now everyone, we're going to look at some German words, words, English words that originated from the German language. What the fuck is the first word? Delicatessen. I've definitely heard of that, I just didn't understand the pronunciation. The first word is delicatessen. Wow, this is actually crazy. This is the first time I've actually seen the word written. A delicatessen is a shop where you can get sandwiches. Oh, like a deli. That's crazy because I... I... I when I used to like, use the word delicatessen, I describe really nice foods. So I'll be like, yo, like, you see that, uh, that ice cream from my man's place, yeah? The 
one of the caramel and uh, the hazelnut and it's just like it's just amazing yeah, yeah that's a delicatessen apparently it's just it's just a shop for fancy foods anyway the next word is what the hell is this Gesundheit. This word in German means health. Especially in the US, people often say Gesundheit as a response when someone sneezes. Often others say, bless you. Example, when I sneezed, my aunt said Gesundheit. The next word is Hamburger. It's a German word apparently. A hamburger is a sandwich consisting of fillings. Usually a patty of ground beef, typically beef, ground meat, typically beef, placed inside a sliced bun. This traditional American cookout food usually comes in the name of the German city. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's a German city called Hamburg. So people are like, yo, let's add an ER to that. Just like people like to add ERs to other words. I guess the original word was ER. Anyway, whatever, 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 whatever. So they added an E on called it hamburger. Example, they served hot dogs and hamburgers at the cookout. The next word is interesting. The next word is kindergarten. Translated literally, this word means children's garden. Clearly. It is a common type of school. In many parts of the world, children often go there for a year or two. When they are five before they start elementary school in the UK, we call elementary school primary school example our daughter is turning five next year so we've been trying to find a good kindergarten for her the next word is neanderthal neanderthals were humans like us but they were a distinct species called homo neanderthal ne neanderthaliensis that's pretty amazing homo neanderthaliensis we are homo sapiens. The word Neanderthal comes from another German place name. Thal used to mean valley, though now it is spelled as Dal. Therefore Neanderthal refers to Neander Valley, which is where some of the first fossils of Neanderthals were discovered. Oh, okay. Okay. It is now used in English when someone is very old fashioned and not willing to change. Example, they they were pushed back by Neanderthal security guards. <laughs> Alright, the next word is poodle. Everyone knows the word. I don't know what this word is. I probably know what it is, but I can't I can't figure it out my brain. Everyone knows the word something comes from German, but not the only word dogs. Oh it's a dog name. Yeah, whatever. But not the only German dogs on the block. This canine name originally came from the low German word Pudlin, meaning splash in the water. Example, my friend's poodle is the best dog I know. The next word is ruck sack. A ruck sack is another name for backpack. Ruck comes from the German word rucken, which means back, and sack is another German word which either means bag, as you probably guessed, sack, what? Either means bag or, as you probably guessed, sack. So, bag or, as you probably guessed, sack. Why does that sound like ball, sack? Pause, 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 pause. Example, Alan is going to travel to Europe this summer, but he's planning on only taking one rock sack. He'll have to pack carefully if he wants to everything to fit. Okay, mate. This next section is on Yiddish. Yiddish is pretty interesting stuff so let's get into it you may never have heard of yiddish but it's a germanic language that was common amongst jewish people in eastern europe today it's mostly spoken in israel eastern europe and other parts of the u.s where jewish families settled but it is an endangered language the first yiddish word that people from i guess the uk english stole from the yiddians the germans is actually glitch Glitch, 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 a glitch describes a small problem, but usually is a problem that doesn't make it impossible to finish something. Example, I planned to go downtown to meet with Betty, but I ran into a glitch. The bus wasn't running, but it wasn't a holiday. 
so I took a taxi instead. Glitch to us means like, let's say you're playing a game and then all of a sudden your character's walking but then he starts running and then he jumps up and he goes all the way to space. That's a glitch to us. The way they describe glitch is like, us a minor inconvenience, that's not what glitch is to us. Anyway, the next word is klutz. A klutz is a person who is very unorganized, uncoordinated or clumsy. In other words, klutzes often have accidents and breaks things. True. Example. My cousin Charlotte is a real klutz. Every time she goes into the souvenir shop, she always seems to break two or three things and then has to pay for them. Well, mate, why don't you make Charlotte stay her ass at home? She doesn't have to go into these shops, my guy. The next word is spiel. In Yiddish and German, the word can mean play, but in English it's used to describe a quick speech or story that usually has been said or told many times. Often a spiel tries to convince you of something. Example, my uncle Thomas believes a lot of conspiracy theories. When we ate Thanksgiving dinner, he did a whole spiel about the government is controlled by lizard people. <laughs> hey, your uncle Thomas. Salute, my guy. <laughs> the next word is... The next word is schmooze. This is a verb that means to talk to someone in a very friendly way, often to gain or often to gain some benefit for yourself. At the meeting, the professors were schmoozing with the president of the club. They want the club to donate money to the university. Basically, brown nosing, ass licking. Now for some Spanish words. The first word is macho. This word describes a person that is strong or masculine. It can also be used to describe a person who is arrogant about his manhood. It also has been used in the name of the professional wrestling popular disco song from the 1970s. Peter, example, Peter is a real macho guy, but that's annoying sometimes. <laughs> he says that real men don't cry, but I think he's wrong. Do real men cry? Let me know in the comment section. The next word is patio. In English, patio generally describes the outside area of a house which often has tables and chairs but no roof. Example, it was a very hot day so we decided to go out onto the patio and have a drink, a cold drink, glass of lemonade. There are some trees there too so the sun wasn't that bad. They were in the shade. The next word is plaza. A plaza describes a public open area in a city which can sometimes be called a square. Plaza is often Plaza is also used in names of many stores, shopping malls, corporate building areas, and other large open areas. If you're a native Spanish speaker, notice that the pronunciation in English has a vibrated Z sound, not a soft S. Plaza. 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 You Spanish speakers watching me currently, comment down how you would say Plaza as a Spanish speaker. The example's mad long to read. What's this word? Piñata. Perfect. Piñata is the next word. This is a happy word that describes a toy that is filled with candy. At parties, children dig turns to break it open with a stick so the candy would fall out. You know, I've been thinking to... Um, to, to, to start reacting to certain things on my channel, right? Some funny stuff, but like, I don't think that'll be very relaxing. I know you guys have seen videos of children like absolutely destroying people and other kids when trying to hit a pinata. It's amazing, but it's not very relaxing. <laughs> so I think I might have to pass on that still. The next word is savvy. It's how we it's how we call a person who makes good judgments. The word savvy likely originates from the Spanish word sabi, 
Sabe. It's definitely not Sabe, but it's it's spelled Sabe, which means nose, not nose, but in the know, like not nose, but like nose. You know what I mean? Example: Many people are know that what is wrong with the spelling of this month. Many people are not that politically savvy. They they missed out the T or not, and they said know that politically savvy anyway. The next word is siesta. A siesta is another name for nap, but it's generally a nap that takes place in the middle of the day, especially after eating or taking a break from work. People often take siestas in hot countries because the middle of the day is when the heat is most intense, so it's a good time to stay inside and sleep. 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 Example, wow, I ate a big plate of spaghetti and now I'm feeling super tired. I think I'll take a quick siesta before I get back to work. The next word is tobacco. Tobacco is a type of plant and its leaves are dried and used for smoking. While the word is likely influenced by native languages, the English word tobacco was derived from the French word, from the Spanish word tabaco, T-A-B-A-C-O. Example, I have never smoked tobacco in my life. I have not straight cigarette tobacco, but obviously you have tobacco in weed and then you smoke it. The next word, actually the final word for Spanish is actually vanilla. A spice that is used to flavor food like ice cream or it can be used in fragrances. And this, this, this uh, article is just resonating with your boy. The English word vanilla likely comes from the, the Spanish word vain, vanilla, which itself comes from the Latin word for pod, vanilla pod, that makes sense. Example, vanilla is my favorite ice cream. These are the words from Japanese. The first word is amazing. Honcho. You know, like M. Honcho. You know, um, what's his name? M. Bison. Master Bison. Anyway, Honcho, Honcholini. The Japanese word Honcho or Hancho refers to the chief and leader in both Japanese and English. It can be used as a verb meaning to organize or to supervise a project, for example. Example, it was recently, I was recently asked to Honcho the new marketing project. That's amazing. Honcho comes from Japanese amazing the next word is actually karaoke you probably know what karaoke is it's when you sing along to a tune of a popular song reading its lyrics from a screen there are karaoke bars and karaoke bars in many countries including the us and the UA, the uk but it's most commonly associated with japan example mitch likes singing karaoke even though he doesn't have an amazing voice but that doesn't matter. The important thing is to have fun with his friends. I like that. It's not about winning or losing. It's the friends we make along the way. <laughs> the next word is very obvious. Karate. Like karaoke, you've probably recognized this word. It describes a popular martial art that originated in Japan. There, the word karate means empty hand. I remember that. I, used to, I took like three karate classes when I was like eight years old and karate has always meant empty and since you don't need any special equipment or weapons for it i think kung fu what taekwondo is for is using your feet and kung fu you use stuff right you use like um nunchucks and uh ninja stars and shit. example lisa has a black belt in karate so you better not try to steal her things what she has a black belt in karate, so you better not try to steal things. Oh, I guess she's going to beat someone up. Listen, I wouldn't steal Lisa's stuff, but if you told me that she has a black belt, I might just try just to see what happens. <laughs> Next word is ninja. This word means spy in Japanese. Wow. See, we, we would think that it means like a fighter. Like someone who can fight really well, but in Japanese it means spy. But in English, it's used to describe a person who can move and attack silently without being seen. People also associate ninjas with fighters who wear masks and all black clothing. 
even though that might not be historically true. In modern use, people who can do something incredibly well are often called ninjas. This is especially common in technological fields, really. Oh, I get it. Example, you should try Carl's cookies. They're delicious. Carl is being... Carl is a real baking ninja. I get it. Next word is origami. Origami is the art of folding small pieces of paper in order to form them into some interesting shapes. Some origami can be really detailed and incredible. That's a fact. The next word is tsunami. This is a gigantic, very, very large. Why did you have to give me the definition of gigantic? Sea wave that is usually caused by an earthquake. Actually, tsunamis are caused by the shift of tectonic plates. I guess the shift of tectonic plates can also cause earthquakes. But they're not caused by earthquakes, no. This next section is words from Native American languages. Native Americans, salute to you guys. The first word is chocolate. Wow, the word chocolate came to England after passing through Spanish, but originally it was... Bro, what is that? X-O-C-O-L-A-T-L. -L. Who knows what the hell that means? In the Naut language, I think it's Naut, right? Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think it's Naut language. I've heard that before. Of modern day Mexico. Example, if you don't know what chocolate is, then I feel very sad for you. Same. Chocolate. Unfortunately, that is literally the only Native American word from English. Or that English is stolen on this list anyway. These are the words from Chinese. The first word is gung ho. In Chinese, this phrase means work together, but in English, it's, u it's used casually to express that you're excited or enthusiastic about something. We generally use it as an adjective. Example, I was really gung-ho to eat some, to eat dim sum. What? I was really gung-ho to eat dim sum. Then when we got to the Chinese restaurant, it closed for the holiday. We were all really disappointed. Hey. The next word is Kung Fu. We were just speaking about Kung Fu. Kung Fu is another popular style of martial arts. In Kung Fu, fighters generally only use their hand and feet but not weapons. Wow, so I was wrong. Kung Fu and Karate are both empty-handed fighting styles. Example, I'm tired of bullies beating me up. I'm going to learn Kung Fu so I can defend myself if they attack me again. You better be careful, bro, because if they bring that steel chair like Bubba Ray and Bubba Ray, Devon, Bubba Devon, what, what were they? Brother, Brother Ray and Brother Devon. Team 3D, the Dudley Brothers. If they bring that steel chair out, just forget about it. The next word is tofu. Tofu is a word that originated from Chinese as dofu. Okay, so we call it tofu, they call it tofu. But before it was adopted into English, it passed through Japanese and became tofu. In Chinese, to means bean and fu means rotten, ra, or sour. It sounds gross when you put it that way, but it can actually be t quite tasty. Shout out to you vegans out there, you guys love that tofu sh stuff. The next word is Typhoon. A typhoon is another name for a hurricane or a cyclone. If it's in the Pacific Ocean near Asia, it's called a typhoon. The word was reinforced by the Chinese word typhoon, which means big wind. But there are also some possible influences from other languages like Greek, Arabic, and Portuguese. A very common word, the next word is, well, phrase, I guess, is yin and yang. In Japanese, yin represents feminine, dark, and nighttime, while yang represents the opposite, masculine, light, and daytime things. In English, these words are used to represent the opposites. Mary is the yin to Peter's yang. The next word, funnily enough, is ketchup. Ketchup may be seen as 
American. What? Can you please write normally so I can read normally? Ketchup may be seen. No, ketchup may seem as American as burgers and cookouts. But the word itself comes from the Cantonese word. Don't know. Don't have a clue. Don't have a froggy mate. Which means tomato sauce. Example, can you please pass me a bottle of ketchup? The next word is chin chin. How do you pronounce that? One sec. Shin -shin. No, it's not shishing, it's chin chin. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. In English and Chinese, it's a drinking toast expression, expressing good wishes before drinking. The word stems from the Mandarin word something, which means please. Example, thank you for the good night. Let's have this last drink, chin chin. In Nigeria, chin chin is, um, it's like a pastry, very hard. It's like a, it's not candy, it's not sweet. It's like, uh, it's very hard to describe, not really, but it's, do you put flour in it? It's like a donut, but it's fried more than a donut, which makes it hard and then you eat it and it's really nice. Flip, just Google Chin Chin and you will see what I'm talking about. <laughs> what is this? Is this, is this Chinese? It is Chinese. Wow, because the next word is brainwashing. It's a term in English used to describe the process of manipulating a person's belief, emotions and behaviours. It might not sound Chinese, but there's a very good explanation for that. Brainwashing is actually the literal translation of the Chinese word. Something. It originated in Chinese during the Korean War, referring to the practice of coercion and mind control. It took off in the US soon after. Wow. Amazing. Example, the prisoners of war were subjected to intense brainwashing from Italian. The first word is apartment. In English, an apartment is a set of rooms in one floor of a building. Apartment usually comes from the word, the Italian word, apart, apartmento. Though it passed through French before entering the English language like many words. Example, he lives in an apartment on the third floor. The next word is broccoli. They're just explaining what broccoli is here. Very popular. Green vegetable. Did you know that the word broccoli comes from the Italian word broccoli, which is which is a plural of broccolo. That's amazing. Broccolo is the the singular. If you have one stem of broccoli, I guess it's broccolo. So when you have broccoli, it's multiple broccolos. <laughs> the next word is, wow, cauliflower. Interesting. Another word is cartoon. In English, it means the symbol drawing. In somewhat humorous style, it's also animated film for kids. Facts. We watch Pocahontas on cartoon. We watched the Pocahontas... We watched the Pocahontas cartoon on TV last night. I'm very, very tired. So excuse your boy's reading level. I promise my reading level is above fourth grade. Paparazzi is the next Italian word. It's a plural of the Italian word paparazzo. It's used in English to describe a photographer or a group of photographers who take pictures of celebrities. They then sell the photos to magazines or newspapers. The next word is piano. We are very familiar with the large keyboard instrument, but did you know that piano is shortening the language of the Italian word? Piano forte. Interesting. Soprano, soprano. My boy, your motorbike does not have to be that loud. What time is it? I think it's not even that late. Wow, it's early. Go off, bye guy. Soprano is the highest singing voice and has the same meaning between languages. The word comes directly from the Italian word of soprano, which is soprano. Nice, nice, nice. From Portuguese, the word cashew. It's a nut in the shape of a kidney that 
word is rich in oil and proteins. Cashew is derived from the Portuguese word cashew, which likely comes from the now extinct Tupi language. Try eating a few cashews as a snack is a healthier option. Now, depending on how many you eat, my guy, it might not be so healthy. Cashews, just nuts in general, are very, very caloric dense, which means that if you have too many of them, even if you have a moderate amount, there's a lot of calories and fat in them. The fat is a lot better than monosaturated fats that you get from stuff like vegetable oils and this stuff. But it's still a bit peak, crazy, crazy, crazy. Portuguese word, cobra. Cobra is a poisonous snake from Africa and South, Southern Asia. The word cobra is a shortening of cobra de capolio, capello, a Portuguese phrase meaning snake with a hood. <laughs> Amazing. Flamingo is the last Portuguese word. While many claim flamingo has Spanish origins, there's an argument that there may have been a Portuguese origin as well. The bright pink bird. The bright, the bright pink birds have not yet weighed in on the conflict. Lol, 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 hilarious words from Arabic. Admiral. In English, an admiral is a high-ranking naval officer who is responsible for commanding fleets and groups of ships. Admiral comes from... It's not actually a word. It's the... Um, it's Arabic writing, basically. Pronounced Amir and sometimes translated as Emir, which refers to a leader. Nice. Another word, alcohol, weird. We are all probably familiar with this word, but did you know that the word alcohol is derived from the word alcohol, which meant the coal, which refers to a powder. Oh, okay. So it doesn't actually mean alcohol, it refers to a powder, and in English just made it alcohol. The next word is algebra. Algebra is a branch of maths where you solve equations. Algebra comes from Alijebar, Alijebar, which originally refers to putting together broken parts. Wow, this is amazing stuff, man. Algebra is my least favorite subject at school. When I was in school, it's probably one of my favorites, I can't lie. The next word is average. In math, it's the mean number of a set of numbers. In English, we also use this word to describe something when it's typical or usual. Average originally came from ewar, which referred to damage to goods. Merchant marine law changed the meaning. Example, it was an average experience for me. Sheik. A sheik is a ruler of a group of people in Arab countries. It's used in English as the title for ruler in some countries instead of words like king or president. For example, the current leader of Dubai, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Mokhtam, is a sheik. So far, so far likely started as the Arabic word so far before entering the Turkish language then the French language and then the English language that's quite a journey zero comes from the word cifer cif, cifre, which passed through Spanish Italian French before it became English wow very very interesting stuff a very interesting video interesting topic concept i hope you enjoyed it uh this was fun i'll see you guys later though